Dallas Cowboys post game show is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Miller Lite. The only beer of the Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. It takes a village in the NFL, and today it took just about everybody the Cowboys gave a uniform to, but they are back to 2-2 two and two and beat the Detroit Lions 26-24. Welcome to the Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham, Babe Laufenberg, and one of the real stars of the game, Tank Lawrence, one of the hot boys, maybe the hottest boy. I don't know. Oh, man, you already know how it goes. I, I do know how it goes. So, the, as Babe pointed out late in the game, uh, the Lions had given up only three sacks all year. You got three today. Why were you able to be so much more successful than everybody else? Uh, yeah, I just woke up this morning and punched in the clock. I know I prepared well um, going, coming into this week, and it was all about, you know, getting out there on the field and um, just putting it on display. So I'm um, happy the outcome was the outcome and ready to go do it again next week. At first, we have to thank you. Demarcus Lawrence wanted to get out of here. I understand there's a uh -huh. lot of commitments. You want to get gone. Yeah. I said, if you can just give us a minute, for every sack you had today, that'd be great. And one day, are you going to spend maybe five, six, or seven minutes with us after one of these uh, things? Depends on how much my body hurts. My body hurts right now. <laughs> I'm just ready to go lay down, you know, so um, get off these feet. Um, that's why you only got two minutes. You know, I always say those sacks, so they're, they're usually dry vendors because if it comes on first down, it's second mm -hmm. and 17. If it comes on third down, obviously you got them off the field. So yeah. how big were each of those sacks to you? Uh, yes, um, it was just in, you know, big times of the game, one before the half, I believe, and, you know, two after the have so um, coming down to the wire you got to be a complete player and you know be able to get out to the quarterback when the time presents itself yeah and that one before the half I thought that and the play that Layton made right after it were just enormous plays because mm -hmm. it, it kept the momentum with you and the opportunity to score back to back you're not thinking about any of that when the ball is snapped are you no I mean Jerry just not to pick his players he did a good job <laughs> <laughs> and I saw coach Garrett talking to you in the locker room before you came out what do you have to say to you uh, he just, you know, telling me um, how tremendous my mental focus is, um, even though my body's hurting, even though I'm tired, and, uh, you know, I, I just keep attacking, and um, that was the main thing, you know, just keep doing it, you know, one play at a time. Right, so, we appreciate that even though your body's hurt and you're yeah. tired, that you get, give some time to us. Ready, man, it's me, bro. There you we know, go. Show some love. <laughs> uh, right, bro. The uh, one more quick thing. <laughs> well, I know. One more See, quick I said thing. three minutes. He yeah. didn't. The, the uh, ways that you are providing leadership, not just the sacks, not just the plays on the field, mm -hmm. even your run play, which we talked about also. Right. But the ways you're providing leadership, to me, they're, they're tangible. Your growth's exponential over the last couple of years. What's the difference in that area for you? Uh, I mean, it's hard to talk about leadership, you know. If you have those ca characteristics, um, it's all about, you know, you know, just being you and um, putting it on display. Like, I mean, I can't just sit here and say, like, you know, I'm, I'm a perfect leader. I do everything by the books, you know. I just, you know, when I go on the field, um, I just give it my all. And, I mean, you can't hate against that. I mean, only thing you can do is really, you know, follow up. So I'm just glad the boys is following with me. Yeah. Great. Uh, hey, everybody, there's three sacks Thank for Tank you. Lawrence. Tank, Thank you, Tank. We're going to see you next Appreciate week, Appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We're see you next week. Absolutely. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Cowboys postgame show continues in a moment. Welcome back to the Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. Cowboys win 26-24. Here's one of the biggest reasons why. Just walk out there, Brett Maher, and win the game. That, that's all you got to do. But it is But it is one of the things you live for, isn't it? That's what a kicker is uh, hoping to get a chance to do. Yeah, those are big situations. Um, you know, and I think there's a lot. There's so much that happened before, before that kick. Um, you know, you just look at back at the drive in general and, uh, Dak made a huge play recovering the fumble getting that out of bounds and and then just being able to lead the offense down to, to get us in range and then uh, Chris and LP with the with the operation and, and made my job as easy as possible so I was happy to do my part uh, all you guys who are good at what you do seem to just say yeah I didn't really do anything everybody else did everything but it is it even though it's what you live for isn't it a little nerve-wracking to walk out everybody else has broken their back for 59 minutes and okay now we just need you to save the psyches <laughs> of the world by making this game I feel like I did my part, uh, you know, and I try to approach every kick the exact same way, and uh, I felt like I did a good job of that uh, today and, you know, kind of stayed in the moment and, and did what I could control, and, again, I'm, I'm very happy. And, Brent, I find it interesting. You were talking about the big play Dak made and Zeke. 
how you you know at the end of that it's going to come down to a field goal for the most part. Do you watch? Do you let your emotions take over in that sense? Or do you try to keep yourself removed and just tell somebody, hey, when I got to go out there and kick, just tap me on the shoulder and let me know? <laughs> uh, you know, I do I do what I need to do to get ready. And what is that, uh, and though? Then, yeah, I've got to, you know, my whole, my whole process, make sure my body feels good, my mind is clear, and, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go out there. And I don't have any, no distractions. I, I feel like I'm, I'm in a good spot to, to be, be able to go out there and, and make the kick. I felt like I did a good job. You know, throughout the whole game, with that uh, first quarter through through the game winner. I know you're a Dallas Cowboy. Obviously, through training camp, you made the roster the first week. Do you really feel like one now, though, after coming into this locker room and everybody looking at you and telling you just how good you were in that situation? Uh, you know, that's been the cool thing about being here is you know everyone everyone around here has embraced me and and uh, well, they you know, embraced I've, you a little bit I've more been, after that kick, I've just been, so you know. Uh, you know, I feel like <laughs> I've been welcomed um, as well. So you know, I, I understand the. The magnitude of the situation i'm not oblivious to that um, but you know at the same time there's there's a lot of stuff that went into me getting that opportunity as well in my experience the best ones who do what you do uh, like you don't show a lot of emotion outwardly doesn't mean it's not like a duck where there's a lot of paddling going on under the <laughs> under the surface there but you said something uh, before the season opening game in, in one of the biggest uh, press conferences I've ever seen a kicker have to have during the, <laughs> during the week. Uh, and, and we were talking about the opportunities you've had and the you know, places you've been. And, and, and I sensed a little edge in you when you said, you know, I'm just crazy enough to think I can do this. Was that something that you always had with you? Did you get down about some of the opportunities that went away before? Uh, I wouldn't say I got down about them, no. Uh, you know, I think I used it as a little bit of fuel. Um, but, you know, you, you never know where, where this journey is going to take you and, and what opportunities you're going to have. So, you know, I try and take advantage of each and every one that I get. And, you know, Brent, you replaced, obviously, a, a very good kicker, one of the best leagues ever seen, and a very popular player on the team and for the fans. Your first kick at Carolina, you miss. Mm -hmm. Now, you haven't missed since. But after that first miss, did you just think... I mean, what went through your mind at that point, knowing what had transpired to put you on this football team? Uh, I didn't have any laughs in confidence, anything like that. Um, you know, I was eager to get back to work, uh, to to get it right, to, and to make the next one and take advantage of that next opportunity again. So again, I'm I'm happy I could do that uh, for the for the team today, and that was a big win for us. You haven't missed since. So does a kicker gain confidence just like the rest of the football team? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think confidence is the same for, for every person, every team. You know, the more success you see, the, the easier it is to kind of get back and uh, and use those moments, um, you know, knowing you've been in situations mm -hmm. and knowing you've been successful. In them. See, he says you missed. I say you hit the flag at the <laughs> well, top yes. of the upright. You could, that, that's almost impossible to do. <laughs> uh, congratulations. Yeah, Big day for you. We appreciate right, the time. Thank you, guys. I appreciate Welcome it. Brett Maher, Cowboys right. Post Game Show, <laughs> continues in a moment. Welcome back to the Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham, Babe Laufenberg, and when you score your first NFL touchdown and you're a critical part of a big win, then you're Jeff Swaim and you get to come back on this show with a smile on your face. We appreciate it very much, and, and we thought uh, between a lot of yeoman blocking work plus uh, you know unleashing you on that 30 plus yard uh, bootleg and, and the touchdown, uh, we, we had the feeling this might have been the best game that you have played as a professional do you think that might be the case uh, maybe so um, but just to be a part of a fight like that you know and we had talked about it all week you know what are we willing to fight for and so to be part of that win to see our defense get stops when they needed to and um, for our offense to do what we did at the end there was huge and so um, more than anything it was just it was pretty special to be a part of that today yeah, career five catches last week in Seattle. You come back today as Brad Sham said, big 31-yarder on the bootleg that's really designed to pick up six or seven in that's the right. old days. That's right. But with the Swamer, it's a 31-yard. <laughs> it's a deep shot now. Yeah, well, you, know, <laughs> you kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes on those. And so uh, if you do a good job selling the, the ball away and coming out of it, um, you have an opportunity to get some yards. And so Dak had you know a nice touch on the ball to get it over uh, Kennard's head there and, you know, able to get me out in the flat and Tavon did a good job on, on the edge getting the block for me so yeah got some yards obviously you you've been here a couple of years mm -hmm. but it's a whole different deal this year obviously with Jason Witten being right. gone did it take you a few games to settle in and say okay 
I'm the man now. The man is gone. Mm -hmm. I've got to step up and be the man. Um, I don't know. I, I think for the most part, it was our offense kind of settling down, getting in the rhythm, you know, finding our identity of what we do. And so um, that to me was kind of the, the bigger the bigger issue was mm -hmm. our offense you know, discovering what we're going to be this year and you know, how are we going to do things. And so uh, to be a part of that and to be a part of that growing process is challenging, but you know, it's, it's, it's good to come out and, and do what we did today and get that win. Yeah, did you feel like this is a little bit more what you are and what you should be in the future? In terms of our offense? Yeah, running yeah. at boot. Had a little of everything going That's right. on, a few I mean, deep if, shots. If, if your offense can run the ball the way we do and, you know, control the tempo of the game, you have a great chance. And it also helps out, you know, the play-action game and the boot game and uh, our third down stuff. It makes your third, down, third downs easier because you're in manageable situations. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you know, that, that that's going to be key is just, you know, continuing to do what we do best, which is run the ball and then take advantage of it when they try to load the box. You alluded to this, but we had the feeling, in fact, said as you were walking off the field as a team after the game, that I think it was hard to put into words exactly what winning that game meant to you guys. It would have been tough to have lost that one and the other side of the coin is how it lifts you up. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you try not to think too far ahead, you know, or, you know, about records and things like that, but you know, you know, the situation you're in and, and you know how critical each game is. And so for us to, to rally the way we did there at the end, especially our offense, to, to kind of help out the defense because they've been making stops all year and playing great ball. So for us to do our part, it was it was special. So I, I was kidding, but I wasn't kidding. When <laughs> when they went into the end zone, mm -hmm. 217 left, I said, well, that's fine because now it's all set up. Just come back down the field, kick a field goal, and right. win the game. But is that what you guys were talking about when they scored? Yeah, I was asked that earlier, and my response was, well, we do this all the time in practice. And they set up situations purposely for us to, you know, when it happens in the game, for us to be comfortable. And so when we got the huddle, there wasn't this panic. There wasn't anything with, hey, man, we do this all the time. Let's go down there. Let's do what we do. And let's go win this thing. And the play before your touchdown, which was on first and goal at the one, Zeke Elliott pops the ball up. Blake Jarwin recovers it in the end zone. Did you think at that time he had a touchdown? I did. I yeah. did. Yeah, I was. <laughs> He picked up the ball. He was just kind of laughing, like this is, you know, this is unbelievable. My first touchdown. <laughs> well, there's nothing to do but laugh there. You, you should have said the, the official, Walt Coleman, came up and said, "Yeah, it is unbelievable because you can't advance a fumble on fourth down." That's right. That's right. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> it's all happy and smiles today. Big game for yeah. Jeff Swaim. We appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. Cowboys post game show continues in a moment. Welcome back to the Cowboys post game show at AT&T Stadium. Brad Sham, Babe Laufenberg, the man of the hour. Head coach said a couple years ago, the runner matters. Here's the runner. He matters. Ezekiel Elliott had a tremendous day today, and I thought they found a pretty good way to use all of your skills. So, but but the first thing I really do want you to talk, try to tell people who are never going to know what you feel like physically right now, what does a game like that with that kind of workload do to your body? Uh, it's tough. You know, you get beat up, um, bumps and bruises everywhere, scratches everywhere. Uh, but, I mean, it's all worth it when you go out there and win a football game. That fourth quarter play, the, the big pass. First off, phenomenal job to be able to catch it like a receiver. Ball coming over. People don't realize how hard that is with a ball dropping in out of the sky. The second thought is, why the heck did they give you the ball the very next play? Because you had to be gassed <laughs> in the fourth quarter and you just sprinted 40 yards. Um, right? Had to. Uh, <laughs> but you you had, know, we, did we, you just say, oh, gosh, you're giving it to me, really? Oh, I wasn't too tired for okay. that play, honestly. I was I was good after that play. But, uh, you know, we were, at that point, we're in field goal range, and uh, we want to protect protect the ball yeah. and, uh, you know, make sure we have good field position. So, I mean, we have no choice but to run the ball right after that. And walking through, I don't know if you call it a wheel route or an inside fade or whatnot, but when you heard that play called, was, did you know it was coming to you when you saw the coverage? Um, yeah, it was just an inside fade. But uh, when I when we came out and started that two-minute drive, they split me out, empty uh, – a couple of plays, and I saw, you know, both times that 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 linebacker was uh, manned up on me uh, mm -hmm. for that inside route with just one safety in the middle, and uh, you know, that's just, I mean, it's the perfect look for that play. And uh, you know, after both of those plays, I looked to the sideline, gave him the signal for that play, like, hey, we need, we got to call this. And uh, you know, Coach Linehan, it got relayed to Coach Linehan. Yeah. Coach Linehan saw the same thing, believed in me, and uh, called the play. Went out there, executed it. That sure did. A perfect throw, uh, and we won the ball game. Is there such a thing as for someone who does what you do as a team relying on you too much? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. But uh, 
I mean, I wouldn't say the team can't rely on me too much. It's not just me. This is football. I mean, one person can't win you a game at all. One person cannot win you a football game. It takes 11 guys every play, and uh, my teammates came out there and you know did a great job, especially the offensive line, just uh, you know starting quick, you know uh, playing playing physical and wearing those guys out and uh, being able to run the ball as well as we did. And now part of wearing them out is what you do to them because you know you're not easy to tackle. And but you had a lot of those before you got the 41. You had a lot of those 19s and some of those things. Is the whole running game finding a rhythm a little bit? Oh, it's, it's definitely finding a rhythm. We hit a, a great stride today and uh, we were we were running the ball well and um, I mean when you when you start the, that game off and you're physical from play one you're going to see as the game goes on that defense gets tired uh, they're going to those those holes are going to get bigger and bigger and you're going to get bigger runs. So Ezekiel now if you're a an Ohio State fan and you're a Dallas Cowboy fan how many people do you think had heart attacks after watching Penn State and Ohio State play it to the wire last night and then you come back and Ezekiel Elliott does this thing. A lot, including myself. <laughs> Were you watching last night? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how big was the win? We talked to Jeff Swaim about it before, about the emotion of, you know, you guys need something good to happen, some, some confidence builders. Every win's big, but under the circumstances, what did winning this game do for your group? I told the guys, uh, this, this game is going to define the season. Uh, we can either walk out of here one and three, and uh, heading down a bad path, or we can walk out uh, 500 to two, and uh, you know, on on a high note. And um, I mean, we stepped up, but we accepted the challenge, and we went out there and won that ball game. Told him that last night or this morning? Uh, today. Okay. Well, uh, if you get any stock tips, we'd like to visit with you <laughs> about that too. Great game. We appreciate the time. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Ezekiel Elliott. Thank Cowboys you. post game show continues in a moment. Welcome back to AT&T Stadium on the Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. Cowboys are 2-2 two and two at 26-24 uh, winners over Detroit. And right after the, uh, toward the end of the game, Babe quoted the odds, or rather the percentage uh, increase that the Cowboys enjoyed of making the playoffs just by winning this game from being 2-2 <laughs> two two to 1-3. We just heard Ezekiel Elliott talk about what he told the team, and you've been in that situation. that You, you kind of knew that that was a big deal. Yeah, and it's crazy this early in the season looking at standings and doing all that. You're four games into it, and yet the odds tell you if they lose this game, they have a 13% chance of making the playoffs. If they win it, they've got a 36% chance. So all of a sudden, what a difference a game makes, and, and this team knew that. These guys have been around. Zeke knew. Right. right. You, you have a tough road to climb if you go one and three in this league. Now you're at least tied for the division lead. We'll see what happens. So like the other win against the Giants, it wasn't perfect. There were a lot of things that if they continue to do all year, they're going to struggle throughout the year. But the winning the game kind of makes it all easier to coach, doesn't it? Well, and I know a lot of people get tired of the head coach and fight and using that mantra, but that's what this was about. It was fight, scrap, hang in there. Hey, you got Matthew Stafford, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He takes you down to his team down. Now, how are you going to respond? 217 left. We saw how the Cowboys responded. And so the Cowboys are two and two. They beat the Lions 26 24. All's right in the world. All the babies are cute again, and Babe and I will join you on the postgame show next Sunday night after the Cowboys meet the Texans in Houston. The Dallas Cowboys postgame show was brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Want to tour AT&T Stadium? For more information, call 817-892-TOUR.